Hello everybody, this is Dee from Dee's Cute and Crafty and I am back with, yes, another fall video for you today. I am loving my fall series. This is video number five in that series. I have three really, really easy decor pieces for you today, or at least if you use the right glue, they'll be easy. Anyway, let's get into it. I have this Dollar Tree Happy Fall sign with the beads on it, which I think is cute as is. But we're just going to make it a little bit different, upscale, make it fit my taste. I have this wonderful um, sunflower napkin from Joanne Fabrics. That little skinny hello word, that wood word came from Joanne Fabrics as well. And I'm using one of the Dollar Tree paint, nope furniture markers, one of the Dollar Tree furniture markers, to just stain the word hello. I love these markers for that. You get a wonderful stain look and they dry almost instantly. So we're just going to sit that to the side and we are going to take the backing out of this fall sign. It's cute the way it is, but we're going to make it a little bit cuter. Let me find something to pull that out of there with. Okay. So we're just going to get that out of there. I'm fighting with it. And I'm going to pull some of that paper off. I thought I could get it all off, but I can't. We're going to use the other side anyway. And then this side you could just cover with some craft paper. Or you could paint it. So now I'm going to just separate the plies. This is a two-ply napkin. So we're just going to separate that so that we don't have to try to put so much Mod Podge to absorb through two plies of paper. If you have napkins that are two ply, even three ply, go ahead and separate that. It makes this process so much easier. And this square is exactly the size. I mean, like pretty much exactly <laughs> the size of the sign. There's only a tiny bit of overhang. So I'm going to take my Mod Podge, and I did go in with my um, white chalk paint. Any white paint will do. And I painted the the um, the wood. It's not really wood. The MDF board because I wanted the paper to pop. I didn't want to leave it brown because I wanted it to really stand out. And if you leave it brown, you get kind of a brown kind of look to your paper. But if you paint it white, it makes your paper stand out a little bit more whatever napkin that you're going to mod podge onto that white shows through adding a little bit of light to your paper so i'm doing all the tricks that you guys told me about i'm using the plastic wrap to smooth this down to keep my fingers from ripping the paper and giving me more wrinkles and i did get some wrinkles anyway but it did look better than it normally looks when i um mod podge my mod podge game is not on point but yet i try so I'm just going to sand down the edges, getting that little bit of extra paper off of there. And you guys, let your piece dry completely before you sand it. Mine wasn't completely dry, and my thumb actually got stuck to the paper. Luckily, I did not rip it. So let your piece dry. So now we're just going to put that back in there. I'm telling you, this does not get any easier than this. And the piece is really very cute. It's a nice fall sunflower piece. So here's the part about using the right glue. I tried to wood or hot glue it on because that isn't actually wood around the edges. It's that waxy kind of vinyl paper. And so, yeah, I ended up popping that word right back off there while I was doing my glue cleanup. Then I peeled all the glue off of it and I hot glued it back down and it popped off again. And I said, okay, I'm over it. This is supposed to be a quick and easy DIY, and I'm fighting with this glue. So I just went straight to my super glue gel glue and had no issues. So just use super glue gel glue. Don't even try to use the hot glue if you have that waxy kind of vinyl feel around the edges of your um, sign. Then I went back in with two of the Hobby Lobby wood leaves, those really pretty little wood leaves that um, Hobby Lobby has in the little wooden tray. And I just popped two of those on the um, corner of the Hello Word, and she is done. Very simple, 
and very cute. I love this for fall. Some flowers just, I don't know, remind me of end of summer kind of fall. So I still love some flowers for fall and I decorate with them for fall. And this was a quick and easy piece. I hope you guys try it out. Moving on to DIY number two, I have a lot of various pumpkins. Well, three. I have this pumpkin from Joann's, which is the first one I showed you. The second one is more of an apple than a pumpkin, but they'll never know if you don't tell them. And then the last pumpkin is from Hobby Lobby. It came on this white skewer or this white metal stick, and I just unscrewed that and took it off. I'm going to be using the Rust-Oleum um, Chiffon Cream. And I'm also going to be using the Waverly Mineral Chalk Paint. So we're going to start out by painting this apple pumpkin <laughs> that I picked up from Target last year in the Mineral Chalk Paint by Waverly. This whole DIY was inspired by that little tiny pumpkin from Hobby Lobby. I thought this is so cute. Let's see what color paint I have that I can kind of match this up with and do a really simple neutral pumpkin decor piece that stands on its own. And this turned out so pretty. It's very elegant and I love it. Very simple. It doesn't take a lot um, to get this look and I thought it was really pretty. So I painted that middle pumpkin that I told you I got from Joann's with the pieces that stand up the little um, ridges. I painted that with the chiffon cream and then I painted the pieces that stand up those ridges in the Waverly mineral and then the the apple that we're turning into a pumpkin <laughs> I painted that with the chiffon cream on the edges of it because it's thick and chunky and then the actual flat part of the pumpkin I painted in the Waverly mineral now I'm taking my little white beads and these beads actually were a placemat. It was a beaded placemat that I got from Burlington Coat Factory and it's been in my stash for at least three years. It was the only one they had left and immediately I knew I wanted it for the beads and it was $2.99 and I cut it apart. There are 350 beads. Yes, so that was an excellent deal. So because I want this one to have something that stands out on it as well because it was very plain and the other two um, pumpkins have that raised design on it. I place these white beads around the edges and I'm going to go in with that chiffon cream and I'm going to just mute them down a little bit because that white was very stark in contrast to the rest of the piece. And now that that's done, everything's all glued down and painted, I'm just going to make a bow for each one of the pumpkins. I put just a little bit of jute cord on the first very small pumpkin because I felt like it went with the color of the raised areas on that pumpkin. And now I'm just going to take a piece of the chevron ribbon. It was very wide, so I cut it in half and just made a bow for that second pumpkin that I picked up from Joann's um, probably last year. And then that third apple pumpkin <laughs> that I got from Target, I'm just going to use some of the farmhouse lace from Dollar Tree. And this piece is gorgeous. Very simple, very simplistic looking, but it also looks high end and elegant. It stands on its own. And if you're into neutral decor, then this is the piece for you. I'd like to take this time to welcome everybody to my channel, all my new subscribers, all my ride or dies. Thank you everybody for being here today. Love you so much. Thank you. Look at that. Isn't she gorgeous? I love how that one turned out. Now, is it my favorite of the three that I'm going to show you today? Nope. If you'd like to know which one is my favorite, you're going to have to keep watching. And as always, comment down below. Let me know which one is your favorite of the three. I would love to hear from you. Moving on to DIY number three and my favorite, we're going to use this fall mason jar, new to Dollar Tree this year, 
couple of the birch pieces, that chiffon paint again, and we're using folk art in Pueblo and Teddy Bear. And I have a lot of scrap pieces of fabric and a lot of scrap pieces of ribbon, some pit berry, and just bits and bobs, some leaves, some greenery. We're just going to make a very rustic um, farmhouse, distressed, kind of primitive pumpkin. And I was so excited about this one because I'm just going to pile on a lot of stuff at the top of it, just giving it more and more to make it look primitive and rustic, to give it the look that I want. If this is too much and you guys don't like all that on top, just do as little as much as you want. But this is my favorite. I love how it turned out. I was wondering what I was going to do with this new mason jar from Dollar Tree because it was pretty as it was. And I really didn't know how I could transform it, but I knew I could, I could do something. So this is what I did. I just took off the metal from the front side and we're just going to cover that up with some craft paper. That's too much glitter and I'm not sanding it. I'm not fussing with it. I'm going to cover it up. So I took that off because we're going to use that metal lid for the back side. And in hindsight, after I used it, I realized you can't even see it. So I could have saved it for something else. But anyway, so I painted it with that Pueblo. I love that orange color for this pumpkin. I glued those two birch pieces together using wood glue and hot glue and attached them to the top of that painted pumpkin. And now I'm just going to put that metal piece back on. And after I load everything on it, all my greenery and my ribbon, you're not going to see it. So again, save that part, put it in your stash and use it for something else. Now I'm going in with my Rust-Oleum Chiffon Cream Chalk Paint. And I'm just going to give it a, a little bit of a look like um, Buffalo Check, but not really. Very loosely. I'm just going to make lines going down and then lines going across in that Chiffon Cream. And now I'm going in with the Teddy Bear. It's a very soft muted brown once you um, add it to the orange. And I'm just going around the edges of it. If you want it to look more rustic or more um, farmhouse or distressed, use a darker brown paint around the edges. But this soft muted brown was perfect for what I wanted to do with this DIY. Now I'm just pulling out all my pieces, trying to see what do I want to use. And I'm going to use some of this satiny, it's a satin feel to it. This is an orange and cream buffalo check. And maybe it's not a buffalo check. Maybe it's more like a plaid. And I don't remember where I got that from. Not sure. It's been in my stash. I'm going to use some more of that chevron that I used in the previous DIY. And that came from Hobby Lobby. They do have something very similar at Dollar Tree, except it's not as wide. It's a little, the width is a little bit, um, I don't know, less. So I'm going to use some of that after I cut it down. I thought I would tie it on or just crisscross it and glue it. Just, I don't know, just being creative and just getting all of my pieces on here. I really want it to be frayed, the edges of that orange and cream ribbon. I ripped that instead of cut it. I just put a little cut in it and then just ripped that ribbon. Because it's a silky texture, it did rip just fine. But I wanted that frayed, ragged look. Now I'm taking the wire from the chevron ribbon because I cut the wire trim off of that. And I'm just going to wrap it around the end of a paintbrush and make it coil up like you do pit berry. And I'm going to put it in the DIY. I'm not going to waste it. I like using the wire and it's giving me more texture. And so I'm going to put it right back on there. I'm going to put some pit berry on there. Some of the little cream colored sunflowers, just anything and everything. This is a good way to go in your stash and use up all your scraps, you guys, because you get something beautiful like this from scraps. I kept looking at that leaf, trying to figure out, do I want to use it? I felt like it was too big for this DIY, so I didn't end up using it. But I just keep piling on and piling on more things. Again, if this is too much for you, if you think it's too messy, it's not your vibe, don't do it. 
but I adore it. I think it is gorgeous. Putting in some little greenery stems. Keep trying to use that leaf. <laughs> it's not going to end up on here. Now I'm putting in my little sunflowers. Going to use some pit berry. And now I'm going to take that brown craft paper and I'm just going to write, hey there pumpkin. And I just cut that out to look like a tag and threaded some jute cord through the top of it after I punched a hole in it. And then after I write what I want on my tag, I'm going to go around the edges of it with some Waverly Antique Wax to make it look old and distressed and more rustic. And then to make it look even more distressed and rustic, I'm going to crumple it up. I want it to be wrinkled. And I'm just going to add some brown beads to the top. And I got these beads from Dollar Tree. Just going to add a few little beads to the top. And then I am going to add this to the stem of the pumpkin. Hot glue it in place where I want it. And she is ready to be displayed. And I think she turned out adorable. Hands down, my favorite of the three. You guys, don't forget if you're enjoying this content, please like, share, comment, and subscribe if you haven't. Give this video a thumbs up so that YouTube knows that you're enjoying my content and they share me out. And if you have a minute and you'd like to share this video out to friends and family, I would greatly appreciate your share as well. Just struggling trying to tie that on in the back because I didn't leave myself um, enough jute to do that. Like barely. But I got it. And then just add a little hot glue to it to make sure it doesn't untie. And just fussing with all my pieces. Making sure you can see all the different ribbons and all the pit berries and things like that. I want you to see all the texture that this piece has to offer. Trim it up a little bit. And here she is. I love this so much. Here's the final reveal of everything that I've made for you today. I think it all came out really cute. I love it, and I hope you guys do too. You guys, thank you so much for everybody that watched my last video, series number four, and commented where you're from. Oh my goodness, it did my heart. It, it did my heart good just to see where everybody is from, to read all the comments. Oh my goodness, you guys are from far and wide. This YouTube thing is something else. I mean, you can reach so many people from so many places and it's just amazing. I'm always surprised every single time when you guys say where you're from. And I'm like, oh wow, they're watching me here. They're watching me there. Thank you. It's It's just amazing to me. I don't think I'll ever get used to like, all the different places 
social media. It's everywhere. It's just mind blowing. I love it. Thank you so much for letting me know where you're all at. Thank you for watching my video. Thank you for being here today. Always blessing. Always a blessing. Craft something beautiful. Bye.